bless you, friends. Good morning. Oh, you can do a lot better than that. Good morning. It is so good to be in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Amen. Our hotel said, welcome to the jungle. Is this the jungle? Yes, I've always wanted to be around a bunch of gorillas. Yes. Any uh, Pittsburgh State students here? Okay. Oh, gorillas right here in the front. And, and after the first service, I found out that not only does the university go by gorillas, Sherilyn, guess what the high school is? Chimpanzees make perfect sense, but it's not. I love. Is it purple dragons? <sighs> Give yourselves a hand, would you? Just amazing. It is so good to be here. We love Tom and Lori. We've been good friends for a long time. Thank you for the privilege of being here. Man, hearing you read that, that bio, I'm going to quit sending out that bio because it sounds like either those people are really old or they can't hold a job. <laughs> but we are thankful for the blessing of God, and we are here today to represent Mercy Ships. And we hope that you got a little card on your way in today, and we've got a booth out in the foyer. There's a lot more literature. We'd love to have you come by and uh, check out some things. You can sign up for more info if you'd like. We represent Mercy, Mercy Ships, which brings hope and healing to some of the forgotten poor on the continent of Africa. For the next few minutes, we're just going to tell you some info about it so you can help us spread the word about Mercy Ships. But Sherilyn, why don't you tell them a little bit about our family? Good morning. So wonderful to be here. And uh, this past June, Bob and I celebrated 52 years of marriage. And uh, so thankful for God's faithfulness. We've been involved in full-time ministry for almost 50 years. And uh, so thankful for the Lord's faithfulness and blessing to our lives. And I uh, just wanted to tell you quickly about our family uh, our son Josh, our oldest son, and his wife Sarah Jane, pastor Victory Life Church in Grand Junction, Colorado. They have uh, Emma, Elijah, and Ezekiel, and then um, two of them. Our, our granddaughter is on uh, doing online studies from Southwestern Assemblies of God University. Our grandson Elijah, there on uh, the left, is studying digital media ministries at Southwestern. And then uh, um, our next slide is our family who live in Nairobi, Kenya, Africa. Our son Jeremy and his wife Tamara. Jeremy pastors vineyard, a vineyard church and now Tamara is the CEO of a financial institution there. And then Katrin and Kayla are Kenyan grandchildren, our twins. They found them in a Mission of Mercy orphanage there in Nairobi when they were five months old, brought them into their home and adopted them at 11 months old. They both turned 19 on Tuesday, and they're here in the States going to college. And then their uh, youngest brother, Peter, is also in the picture. And uh, our daughter, Jenna, the next slide, and her husband, Ben, our worship pastors at a church in Birmingham, Alabama. And they have Ryan, Rachel, and Sam. So we're so thankful for our, our family. Amen. Amen. We've known, we've known the founders of Mercy Ships, Don and Dion Stevens, for many, many years. We've known them since we were teenagers. I'm curious, how many of you were ever a teenager? Okay, some of you, I absolutely know, Tom, this is a congregation where some people will never raise their hand. It's okay, we're just, we're having a little fun today. But we've known them since our teenage years. We both attended First Assembly, all of us attended First Assembly, and we'll tell you a little bit more in a few moments about uh, that connection. But Mercy Ships follows the 2,000-year-old model of Jesus, simply bringing hope and healing to some of the world's forgotten poor. And to do that, we utilize ships, specifically hospital ships, to provide world-class medical, surgical, and dental care to poor coastal nations in Africa. And everything done on our ship is done 
free of charge. We're often asked, why ships? Couldn't you do things on land? Some organizations, Doctors Without Borders, do things on land. But we utilize ships for a couple of reasons. One is efficiency. We can bring everything we need to each port right there on the ship. Accessibility also is a key for us. Over 50% of Africa's population live within 100 miles of a port city. We utilize right now two ships, and this next slide is one that we absolutely love. If we could show that next slide. There we go. And just keep that there for a moment, Grant. By the way, thanks to all the media team and for Grant for helping us with all our slides. Uh, that shows both of our ships. That is taken in Dakar, Senegal about three months ago. We brought both ships in for a celebration with African nations for 30 years being there. On the left is the Africa Mercy, and it's been in service with us for 15 years. It was an industrial ferry that was retrofitted to become a hospital. COVID uh, took us out of service. We had to leave Dakar, Senegal suddenly in March of 2020, and we were gone for 22 months, but we arrived back in Dakar in February of this year. Since that time, we have seen uh, right at 600 surgeries done on board the ship. It will complete its service in December of this year. Then for an entire year, it will be refurbished remodeled. It will also be in dry dock in South Africa. But in December of 2023, Lord willing, it is sailing to Madagascar. And we're thankful for that. But the Global Mercy on the right is our new ship. It was completed earlier this year. It was in Dakar for a few weeks. Uh, we brought medical professionals on board the ship to use our classrooms. But it is currently in the Canary Islands, just west of Africa, being outfitted with all of the rest of its medical equipment. Early in 2023, it will head back to Africa, first in Senegal and then on to Sierra Leone. The next slide shows you some stats about the two ships, the Africa Mercy on the left, 500 feet long, the Global Mercy, a little longer, 600 feet. That is two football fields long. These are massive ships. The Africa Mercy, eight decks. The Global Mercy, 14 decks. 78 hospital beds, the, uh, beds on the one on the left, and 200 hospital beds on our larger ship. Quarters for 400 plus on the Africa Mercy, over 600 on the Global Mercy. The Global Mercy also has state-of-the-art classrooms, surgical simulators, its own ICU, and uh, its own pharmacy. We're going to show you a brief video that will help explain more about Mercy Ships. Though it's a bit outdated, it will still help you understand Mercy Ships. You're going to see Don Stevens, the founder, who began Mercy Ships in 1978 at the young age of 32. Please turn your attention to the screen. Almost 40 years ago, I took my first trip from Lausanne, Switzerland, by train to Italy to look at ships. I listed some of the things that I didn't know or that I'd heard. Things like, you can't do that. It's way too expensive. I didn't know where we would find the crew. In fact, I didn't know what I didn't know. I was 32, that's awfully young. Almost 40 years ago, God took a huge risk. I could say that it all started with a hurricane or reading a book about the famous SS Hope. I could say it started with meeting Mother Teresa or with the birth of our special needs son, John Paul. Or I could say it began with my parents' simple way with grace and mercy and dignity with their small town helping hands. 
I could say all of those things about the very beginning of the idea that became Mercy Ships, and they'd all be true. Mercy Ships is a unique organization because it is bringing services to countries that would otherwise never be able to access those services. The millions of people who either physically or financially do not have access to health care are staggering. We just see people that need help. You realize that they have no way of getting help. And I want them to know that they're loved. After the rejection and the ridicule and the hard lives that they've had up until this point, then to have a ward full of nurses and the other ship staff, people just pour out so much love on them. Love does make a difference. <laughs> People say to me, well, there's all these millions. How, how do you think you can change that? And we can change the individuals one life at a time. Bringing this hospital ship in, it's a state-of-the-art platform. Surgeons, nurses, professionals from all over the world offering this free of charge at the highest standards is unique. If you talk to any of the government leaders, as I have, they will tell you how beneficial Mercy Ships has been, not only for their people, but also in terms of a lasting impact. We're working hard here to leave a legacy of improved health care. Mercy Ships is particularly good at providing not just training, but training with an imbued sense of needing to pass on the training. We can work together and do things together that we can never do by ourselves. Our crew is made up of all volunteers. We have over 400 on the Africa Mercy and over 600 on the Global Mercy. Over the span of one year, we have approximately 1,200 different people who serve. They come from over 50 nations, with about a third of them coming from the United States. 50% of our team are medical personnel. We need doctors, surgeons, nurses, anesthesiologists, and many others. But it's also important to note that the other 50% are non-medical. We need cooks, we need teachers. Yes, we even have an accredited academy on board for crew that come and bring their families. We need housekeepers, receptionists, dining room staff, and more. Plus, we need technical volunteers, seamen, carpenters, plumbers, electricians. You can grab a fact sheet that we have out on our table, and uh, there's a list of even more volunteers that we need. Some of our volunteers serve for only two weeks, some for a month or longer, some for a year or longer. Everyone pays for their own airfare to the port city where the ship is docked, and then you pay a monthly room and board fee of approximately $400. You can also go to our website, mercyships.org, and see other lists of volunteers that we currently need. One thing I just realized I failed to mention when I was talking to you about our ships is that new ship, the Global Mercy, uh, that is now in the Canary Islands. I am so glad to tell you that that ship that cost uh, over $200 million is totally paid for because of gifts from individuals, churches, and corporate sponsors. We're, we're glad for the corporate sponsors that come alongside and, and help us. We're often asked, why Africa? Aren't there poor people everywhere in the world? If we can go to the next slide, there we go. 93% of sub-Saharan Africa cannot access the health care they need. You saw in the video, you may have heard 
the volunteer doctor there talking about people not getting the health care they need. Now, I know that we in America, let's confess, uh, it's almost become a hobby of ours about complaining about our health care, that this happens and that happens. Uh, Sherilyn had to get a dermatologist appointment and was told that it'll be quite a while before you can see a dermatologist. Well, uh, just realize that for most of sub-Saharan Africa, they cannot ac access the health care. Let me put it to you this way. L let me share some stats with you. In the United States, a city of about 100,000 people, Topeka is your capital, it's about 125,000 or so. So take a city slightly smaller than Topeka. In the United States, there is an average of 278 doctors for that city. In Senegal, for a city of 100,000 people, only seven doctors. Concerning dentists, and I know some of you start to break out in hives when we mention dentists, but in America, for a city the size of 100,000, 61, approximately 61 dentists. In Dakar, Senegal, 100,000 people, one dentist. Interestingly, some of those pictures you saw of the hideous uh, tumors, facial tumors, most all of those are benign, and most of them are simply tooth enamel that has gone crazy. And without dental care, it can't be taken care of. That's why we go to Africa. Of the world's 28 poorest nations, 27 of them are in Africa. Many of their hospitals are in total disrepair with outdated equipment and oftentimes the electrical grid to operate the facilities is unreliable. Again, that's why we go to Africa. What do we do? Well, yes, we do surgeries and we'll talk about those in a minute, but uh, we also bring on board African medical professionals to provide training and mentoring for them. We call it building medical capacity. We want to leave the medical industry in every country we go in much better shape than it was when we arrived. And let me just tell you a, a fresh new story that just came out this week that I put out on Facebook. A young surgeon, a Senegalese surgeon, connected with uh, Mercy Ships about four years ago. We brought him on board. We helped give him training. We helped provide equipment for him. Up to just a few weeks ago, Dakar, Senegal, or the nation of Senegal, did not have a pediatric orthopedic surgeon that was fully qualified and certified. But because of Mercy Ships and what we do, Dakar, Senegal now has a Senegalese surgeon that is certified to do that. Isn't that wonderful? And we give praise to God. We also renovate and update and improve local health care facilities. You saw some on the video. I think we have a shot of the, of the operating room before we arrived, and this is what it looks like after we are there. Let me talk about surgeries. We have a screen that, that talks about surgeries we don't do every kind of surgeries, but we do give thanks to God that in the 40 plus years we've been around, 106,000 surgeries have been done on board our ships. Life-changing surgeries, and we're thankful for that. A half a million dental procedures, we're also thankful for that. What kind of surgeries? Well, 50% of our surgeries are related to the eye. They're ophthalmic. They're Cataract surgery. Sherilyn will tell a testimony in a moment. Uh, people, cataracts in the America is just a, a, a rather routine surgery. In third world countries, oftentimes children are born with cataracts and they cannot see. So we do a lot of cataract surgeries. About 25% of our surgeries are maxillofacial, the removal of those tumor removal tumors on the face and also cleft palate surgeries. The remainder are orthopedic, repairing malformed limbs, burn repair, reconstructive, and also we repair fistulas. Sherilyn will tell you about this unique uh, women's surgery. Sherilyn, why don't you share some testimony? We had a wonderful opportunity a few years ago to be involved with a live stream 
chapel service on board the Africa Mercy. And at the, uh, towards the end of the service, after we had worshiped and heard a, a wonderful message, um, a nurse came up with, with four young women with their, their babies, and uh, she just wanted to share the testimony of one of the little babies, and his name was Paul. And when the ship first got into to, uh, the port, they always wait a few days before they start screening patients. They get everything set up. Well, this nurse was out on the, on the deck, and she looked down the gangway, saw this young mother, this young woman holding a tiny bundle. So she, the Lord just spoke to her and said, go talk to this woman. She went down, and as the woman unwrapped her baby, she saw the, this little boy, Paul, up in the top left, um, so malnourished. He had a cleft lip and palate, so he wasn't able to nurse or to, to suck and get nourishment and uh, so malnourished that the nurse just knew he wasn't gonna be able to survive even a few more days. So she broke all the protocol, all the rules, said come with me, took the baby in her arms, took him up on, on board the ship. They started him on the infant feeding program. They fed him intravenously, got his, uh, his body, his uh, able, strengthened and, and able to withstand the surgery. So there he is on the bottom right um, after he's been through the infant feeding program. The next slide is his mother just smiling and beaming because little Paul is no longer malnourished. He's been able to, to eat and to withstand the surgery. And uh, we're so thankful for the way the Lord helped uh, Mercy Ships do this surgery for little Paul. Uh, our next surgery is of a family of a husband and wife who had five children. All five of those children were born, born blind with cataracts. And when the, the couple heard of Mercy Ships, the children were ages 6 to 15, and they um, took them to the ship. They all five had their cataracts removed, had the surgery, and were able to leave the ship after they recovered, being able to see. So thankful for that. Um, as you came in, you saw the mannequin with the, the beautiful African dress. And um, the, the surgery that we perform for women um, that are going through, they're pregnant and then they start going through labor. And so many times their labors are just very grueling for, for uh, two to three days, and they don't have the option of having a cesarean. And a lot of times when the babies are born, they're stillborn. And um, they are left incontinent, they leak urine, can't control their bladders, and uh, are just an embarrassment to their husbands, to their families, and they, they just uh, are ab abandoned and rejected. And so many times they just, um, have to go out, they live in secu seclusion, they have to go out and forage for food at night. Um, but we bring them on board and do the surgery to where we repair their bladders. And we replace their urine-soaked dress <laughs> with a brand new dress called a celebration dress. And the next picture is um, we have a party for them after they've gone through recovery. We give them a new dress. And um, yes, we give them a makeover. We give them a Bible and some jewelry. And uh, if, if you'd like to, uh, I, I carry that dress with me just if the Lord speaks to your heart and you want to help restore hope and dignity to one of these women by purchasing a, a dress for $25, we can send that in and, and uh, the port where they are, they can, um, they can buy a dress for them. One other testimony I want to tell very quickly, I don't have a slide for it, but in that first video, you saw a collage of, of different people who had had uh, surgeries. The first one that you saw right in the middle was Samboni, and he had a 16-pound tumor on the side of his face. And that had been growing for, I believe, about 30 years. And he had gotten so weak he could not move or not walk. And he had four friends that took turns carrying him 
from the small village where he was to, um, to the ship, and they removed that tumor. And uh, just, he was able to go back to his family and, and get a job. And um, so we're just so thankful for what Mercy Ships is able to do for people. Now turn your attention to the screen and we'll show you another video. Nearly 50 years ago, love set its sights on Africa. Hope took to the waters and pushed forward to the cities. Performing life-changing surgeries, making the blind to see, the lame to walk, Doctors were trained. Lives transformed. And the more love was given, the more it grew. A few staff became an army of volunteers. Local helpers became trained staff in modern clinics. For a staggering total of medical services and goods, onshore clinics were started that are still there. Today, as we celebrate over 40 years of love moving forward, we look eagerly to the next 50, continuing our mission to follow the model of Jesus, bringing hope and healing. We've returned to serve the people of Senegal. And with the addition of our new hospital ship, the Global Mercy, we will more than double our impact in the coming years. Together with your faith, prayers, and support, more people will be healed more families restored, and more communities impacted. Your compassion changes lives. Mercy Ships thanks you. Amen. Sherilyn and I came here today because we are thankful for all the countries that are represented on board our ships. We're thankful for the one-third of our crew that's from the United States. But we are praying today, why not some crew from Pittsburgh, Kansas? I thought I'd get a response from you. Why not some gorillas on board our ships? Hey, just before I give this microphone back to Pastor Jacobs, I just want to share a couple of backstories and share a, a scripture with you. The text is Mark chapter 6, verses 50 and 51 from the NIV. It simply says this, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. We've been talking to you today about ships, about boats. This text is from the New Testament where that story happened where the disciples were by themselves in a boat. The text says that the wind was against them. Have you ever felt like in your life sometimes the wind seems to be against you? It was like that for the disciples. But then the text says that Jesus came along. Don't you love it when Jesus shows up? Jesus, it says, got into the boat with them. What I simply want to say to you today, sir, ma'am, we may have never met before today, but I believe that we are here by divine appointment 
And God just wanted to use a 72-year-old guy to simply tell you that the same Jesus that climbed into the boat with the disciples wants to be into the, in the boat of your life. Even in the midst of your worst storm, Jesus wants to be there with you. It could be said that mercy ships began in a storm. Let me tell you a backstory. Mercy ships began way back in the 60s. Anybody here besides me remember the 60s? Oh, yes. Don Stevens was raised in western Colorado in a small potato farming, corn farming community called Olathe. Not Olathe, Kansas, but Olathe, Colorado. He graduated from high school there in 1963. He had gone to Assemblies of God Church youth camps. He had met a young lady from Grand Junction. They had begun dating. Let's hear it for Assemblies of God youth camps. He graduates from high school from a small little Olathe Pirates. He goes 50 miles north to the larger city of Grand Junction. There's a junior college there called Mesa Junior College. He enrolls and begins attending First Assembly of God. He had attended the small little AG church in Olathe, but he begins attending First Assembly. Don's 19 years old. At that time, in that same church, Sherilyn and I were there. I was 14, Sherilyn was 12. Don Stevens, dating Dion, his girlfriend, hears about a missions trip. It was a missions trip for Assemblies of God kids from all across America. And about 145 of them signed up, 10 from our church. I still remember as a 14-year-old seeing those 10 young adults being prayed over as they were sent out to the Bahamas. Now, I know some people say, man, if I ever go on a mission trip, I'd love for it to be in the Bahamas. Well, it was a great mission trip the first few weeks. It was supposed to be two months long. The first six weeks were wonderful The 145 young people were scattered all over the Bahama Islands. But the last two weeks, they were going to come back to the main city, and they were going to climax everything with street evangelism, puppets, and it was going to be awesome. But something else showed up. In August of 1964, you can Google it. I'd prefer you don't Google it now, but you can Google it later and find out that Hurricane Cleo showed up. At about the same time, all of these kids came to this city. Hurricane Cleo completely devastated the last two weeks of the missions trip. Most of the time, the young people spent trying to get out of the wind and the rain. And one day, a few of them were in this old airplane hangar praying. And one young lady stood to her feet and prayed a prayer that went something like this. It really was a prophetic prayer. She had no idea what she was praying, but she prayed this prayer. Oh, God, wouldn't it be wonderful if someday you would help us provide a ship filled with doctors and nurses that could come to places that are devastated, like the Bahamas? When Don Stevens, a 19-year-old young man, heard that prayer, the Holy Spirit whispered in his heart, that's what I want you to do with the rest of your life. That resonating in his soul became a reality 14 years later in 1978 when mercy ships began. Now, here's the point. No doubt many of those young people, and maybe some of their parents that helped raise all the money, felt the hurricane wiped everything out, and maybe even asked the question that said basically, God, why would you allow that to take place? That doesn't make sense. Have you ever had things happen in your life that you hadn't planned? Somebody once said, life is what happens when you had something else planned. But the reality is this. In the middle of the storm, mercy ships was born. The concept of mercy ships was born in a hurricane. 
It seemed out of control, but something supernatural was taking place. There's another backstory. It happened in 1977. Don alluded to it on the video. The year before they were going to set sail in their first ship, Dion gave birth to a little boy named John Paul. Somehow, John Paul's brain was damaged during the pregnancy. And he was born a special needs child with an autism-like syndrome. John Paul has never spoken. He cannot take care of any of his personal needs. He cannot feed himself. And there's a picture of him there with Donna Dion. He has the brain function of a small child. Today, he is 45 years old. And Don and Dion take care of his every need. The first 15 years of his life, he lived on board the ship. Now, some may say, how horrible a situation. Why would God allow something like that to happen with a young man and a young lady who had committed themselves to following the call of God in their life? How could that make sense? <laughs> Can I just tell you that in the midst of that storm, Jesus was in the boat. Now, it just so happened that after John Paul's birth, a few weeks later, Don was scheduled to go to Calcutta, India, and meet with the veteran Assemblies of God missionary named Mark Buntain. Don got off the plane and had a few days with Mark Buntain, and one day Mark said, Don, would you like to meet Mother Teresa? And Don said, absolutely. Mark arranged it. They went to the little place where Mother Teresa was. And Don spent 20 minutes. And God used that powerhouse little Catholic lady to speak prophetically into Don Stevens' life. She knew nothing about his story, but she looked at him and said, where is your pain? And Don shared with her their pain of not understanding. Oh, they loved John Paul, but how, how were they going to take care of their two other children and John Paul and still lead this ministry? Mother Teresa looked at Don and she spoke prophecy into his life. She said, your son will help you on your journey because he will teach you. He will become the ears, the eyes, the mouth, and the hands for the poor. <laughs> and that prophecy has come true. If Don and Dion were on this platform today, they would tell you it was John Paul that taught them how to serve the poor. What about you today, sir, ma'am? Are you going through a storm? Have things happened in your life that do not make sense? Do you fear for your future? Do you feel like the winds are against you just like they were for the disciples? Can I remind you, men and women, that the same Jesus that climbed into the boat with the disciples wants to climb into the boat of your life. In the midst of your chaotic situation, he can calm the winds, especially those winds of anxiety that are inside of us. We live in a world that seems to have gone absolutely berserk over the last two to three years. But Jesus is the one that can come and calm the storms. He's the God who promises never to leave us. He is with us. And perhaps, hear me men and women, perhaps in the middle of your worst storm, God is doing something supernatural. And in my heart, I just want to say this. The Lord just impressed upon me to say it. I love the fact that university students are here. Keep in mind that what you saw today on the screens has happened simply because a 19-year-old young man said yes to God. University students, give your life to God. Give your future 
to God. Why not world changers coming out of Pittsburgh State in Pittsburgh, Kansas? Why not? You may not lead. You may not lead a ministry like Mercy Ships, but young man, young lady, you are here today by divine appointment that God wanted me to whisper into your soul. He knows exactly who you are. He knows your story. Yes, he knows the times that you've messed up. Join the human race. But he's the God who can take what you have and he can make it into something powerful. Don't give in to despair. When things get tough, men and women, don't bail. Don't quit when the storm comes. The storm may be raging, but the God of the Bible is with us. Let Jesus in the boat of your life. Heavenly Father, I sense your spirit here in a powerful way. Sherilyn and I are so grateful that you allowed us to be here. We pray that your hand of blessing would continue to rest upon Pastor Tom and Lori and all the other staff and the elders. Oh God, I pray that the best days for Flag Church would be in their future. I pray for every young man, young lady, not so young man, not so young lady, everyone here in this auditorium. Oh God, I pray that your spirit will speak into our lives. That all you want us to do is to say yes to you. That you will guide us. That you will provide for us. Some of my friends are going through a horrific storm. But Jesus, you're the one who wants to be in our boat and you can calm the storm of our lives. Bless this church, I pray. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.